Hey, welcome to the Lockdown Lookup. It's Friday and it is the last in our uh, devotion series through the armor of God. But never fear, starting on Monday, we have a brand new devotion series that will be going through the seven I am statements that Jesus makes about himself in the book of John. So we're really looking forward to that. That starts Monday, same time, same place. But for today, we get to close out our series through the armor of God by looking at a surprising last piece of equipment that is often left off the armor of God list. See if you can uh, spot what I mean. Let's read together Ephesians chapter 6 and reading from verse 14. It says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So it's interesting as we get to that, that end of that list, so there's one last piece of armor, uh, so we've got the traditional six pieces of armor, but if you look right at the end, Paul mentions praying at all times. And the sentence is not over. By the time he gets to the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, he just carries on praying at all times. And he goes on to mention prayer four times in closing out this passage. And each time he mentions prayer, he mentions the word all. It's kind of there as this emphasis I know for Kristen and I, when we're maybe having a bit of an argument, we might say to each other, you always, or you never. And we don't actually mean that technically. What we are doing is, is emphasizing. And it seems like that's exactly what Paul is doing here. Emphasizing prayer right as he closes out this armor of God passage. In fact, you could say that prayer is the climax of this passage, or perhaps the climax of the whole of the book of Ephesians. Just think about all of the promises and all of the instructions. It all culminates in this last resounding call to be praying. And so I'm going to look at today, just as he mentions, mentions prayer four times and all Four times, I think that actually boils down to two specific instructions regarding prayer that I want to highlight to you. So the first of those is this, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. I don't know about you, but I always struggle when I read scriptures that say praying at all times. I'm like, I struggle with prayer as it is, but at all times? I mean, are you kidding me? Like, like right now while I'm doing this devotion, am I supposed to be... Praying, what does it mean to pray at all times? And I was really helped one day by a pastor who just tweeted this and it's, uh, it really resonated with me. He said, sometimes prayer is simply inviting Jesus into the conversation in your head. You know what I mean? And when you're driving or you're in the shower, just when you're consumed, you're really thinking about something, just the thought pops into your mind, invite Jesus into that conversation. That's what I think Paul means when he says praying at all times in the Spirit. I don't think he's referring to a spiritual way of praying and maybe gift of tongues, which is another whole conversation. I think what he means is engaging with the Holy Spirit kind of in the course of your everyday life, perhaps by inviting Jesus into the conversation in your head. I remember another pastor saying once that he referred to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Manager. And I thought, huh, that sounds almost a little bit like sacrilegious. I mean, we don't think of managers in spiritual terms. And then I thought about it, I thought, hey, like maybe he's right. The Holy Spirit is involved in the detail of our everyday lives. And praying at all times in the Spirit means inviting and involving God in everything that is happening in your life. I think that's a fitting summary to the book of Ephesians and how he's supposed to pray into all of those things. But then he goes on 
to say this, so praying at all times in the Spirit, and to that end, keep alert, <clears throat> excuse me, with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me. You know, what's really interesting is that, as far as I can tell, at the end of every one of Paul's letters, he, he ends with uh, asking people to pray for him. And almost every time, except for one, which is First Thessalonians, the prayer request is for the advancement of the gospel through the proclamation of his words. Which just means, hey, we've got to be praying for God's kingdom to advance through the proclamation of the gospel. And that involves praying for me, but also all saints, all Christians. Praying for all Christians to be able to boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel. And don't we really need that today? Not just in dealing with opposition that comes from the enemy, but especially in these times. And so I want to ask you, just as you are embracing this idea of praying at all times in the Spirit for yourself, to be extending that, to be praying for the advancement of the gospel through boldly proclaiming the message of Jesus for you, for me, for all Christians everywhere. That's all for this series. Look forward to seeing you on Monday. Cheers.